Okay, so good morning. Um, we're going to try something a little bit different today. Uh, rather than continuing on with our scatter plot stuff, I want to sort of expose you to sort of the rest of the unit. Uh, little snippets here and there, and then maybe do some other things. Because scatter plots, I really don't enjoy doing them when we can't like actually get really involved in it and have like that personal time in class and that time to really do some research on stuff and make good plots that we care about. So. We're going to look at something called a two-way table. That's a different way to compare uh, types of data. And this type of data is less stuff that gets measured and more stuff that gets counted. So we're going to see this. It looks a little bit different. And anyway, so I'm actually on a website called GeoGebra at the moment. And I'm going to show you the link in just a moment if I can get it. Actually, yeah. So I'll have the link copied for you as well when you look at this. But just so you can look at it now, um, if you want to pull it up on your own computer at some other point, the link is geogebra.org slash m slash vmedcqu2. Uh, and that's just the link to this app I'm using. And this has a, is a great website to practice, especially this one in particular, because I'm going to do a problem about uh, service workers and sales workers and their college degrees and you can just give yourself more practice problems by just changing the seed number uh, to just get you different combinations of numbers and we're gonna go through a couple of those today anyway so we're gonna start at just seed one and there's also different data sets you can use as well so if there's sales versus service versus sales office knows I'm at data set two is the sales versus service workers. So uh, we're gonna play around with a couple of these. Like there's also like managers versus like construction. There's six students, so that go well with what we're doing. Uh, and stuff like that. So there's all this different stuff you can look at. Bronx versus Queens in New York City. Uh, so we're just gonna look at the service and sales workers for today. So what a two-way table does is it gathers data. It's kind of like you gather like survey data in a two-way table, or things that can that you have like multiple choice options. So for example, I could gather like data on whether or not you as students are, I don't know, male or female, etc. Or I could gather data on like what color shirts you're all wearing, or what color your eyes are, or color your hair are. Um, as long as there's a finite number of options, meaning I have limited options to choose from. We're going to look today at just two options, like college degree, no college degree, uh, versus service worker, which is like more work with your hands, like maybe you work like in food service, or maybe you work or performing a service like a hairdresser, or maybe a sanitation worker, versus like do you work in an office, or like sales. So... Usually blue collar, white collar is a more colloquial way of putting it. But basically, um, there's only two options that the people surveyed are going to fit into. So a two-way table gathers data. So we know that we have a sample of 42 U.S. workers. So they surveyed 42 people. And they asked them, basically, whether they were service workers or sales workers. So everyone's either sales or service. And then whether or not they had a college degree. So what a two-way table does is it sort of says, all right, everybody who is a service worker is in this row. And everybody who is a sales worker is in this row. And then, in, that's horizontally, and then vertically we have columns. So for no college degree, everyone with no college degree goes in this column here. Oh, that moved. Didn't know that was going to happen. And then everybody with a college degree goes in this column. So this 14 is people who were service workers and have no college degree. And this column here is people who had a college degree and were service workers. And so this right here, this 16, is like the total, I can't write on this, is like the total number of service workers. And this here would be the total number of sales office workers. And like this blank space here would be the total number of sales office workers with no college degree. And this would be the total sales college 
sales office workers with a college degree. And then this 34 is the total number with no college degree. And then we have a few blank spots. So really want to think about a lot of this TUI table stuff is just understanding like what addition subtraction problems we're working with. So we know that of all the no college degree people, there were 34 of them and 14 were service workers. So how many must be sales and office workers? Well, 14 plus 20 is 34. So I have to have had 20 sales office workers right there. And then for college degree, I'm sorry. Uh, yes. So there are 20 here. Okay. So the other thing I know is that there were 42 total U.S. workers. And this spot right down here, in this bottom right, is the grand total of 42. So if there's 42 total workers right here, that means there was eight total with college degree, because 34 with no college degree plus eight with a college degree gets me that 42 total down here. Okay? I'm going to show those values now. So we figured out that there were 20 with no college degree, and we figured out that there were 42 total workers here. So, and we also figured out that since there were 42 total workers and 34 with no college degree, we knew that 34 plus 8 had to get us 42. There had to be 8 workers with a college degree because 34 of them had no college degree and there's 42 in total. So then, it's really just a matter of these, we didn't know the 6 and the 26 at first either. It's just a matter of putting them all in the right place. So I know that I had two, with a two service workers with a college degree and eight total people with a college degree and two plus what gets me eight? That would have to be six. And then over here, I know that, well, all right, there were 16 total service workers and 42 total workers, and 16 plus 26 gets me 42. So really what we're going to focus on today is just filling in those blank numbers. Like, do we, can we figure out the blanks? Like, if I know how many non-college degree workers there were and how many college degree workers there were in the service industry, I know how many total there were. So can I figure out those missing pieces, okay? Let's get one more. Let's look at, I don't know, let's look at this one. Okay. Uh, two bigger numbers. This is boring. Uh, 58. That's a good number. Hmm, do I want this one? Yeah, I'll leave this one. So here, we know a lot of interesting things. So in the table below, we, oh, hold on, let me pause it for a second so that I can get the numbers on the table. Okay, sorry, I just want to have the numbers accessible to me. So, yeah, so this one is about adults were asked if they supported a law that would provide more government support for higher education. Basically, would you support a law that lets the government pay more college tuition, stuff like that. It's actually a very uh, topical subject that's on the table all the time, pretty much. They were also asked if they voted in the last election. Because sometimes people who don't vote have different opinions than people who do vote, or they're just relationships. And a lot of times the goal with two-way tables is to determine if there's a connection between our two variables. We'll look at how to do that later maybe. If not, eh, no big deal. But that's what you can do with two-way tables. You can see if there's like, wait a second. For example, you might find that like everyone who voted in the last election was opposed to this. And you might find that most people who didn't vote were in favor of this. So you might find relationships like that. Like, wait a second, like there's a disconnect here. Like, uh, yeah, anyway. So let's see what we can figure out here. So in the, table, in the table, there were 58 adults who were asked if they voted in the last election. All right, so we know that 58 goes down here in my bottom right corner. My grand total is my bottom right corner. And that's just to keep track of like everything in the table. So then if I know that there was 41 total people who voted, 
in 58 total people surveyed, 58 minus 41 gets me those who did not vote. So 17 people in the survey did not vote. 41 voted, 17 did not. So now I gotta figure out, all right, well, if 17 didn't vote and seven were opposed, that leaves 10 who voted and were in favor. And then if 41 voted and 17 were opposed, 41 minus 17 would get me 24. And then finally down here, I know that 58 people were there in total, 24 were opposed, and so all right, 58 minus 24 gets me 34. So really the main goal is to see that relationship, that the, the, the row adds up to get the final number in the row, the row total. And the column adds up to get the final number in the bottom, the column total. And that grand total comes on the very bottom. Okay? So, hopefully that helps. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's a quick one today. So your Google form should be very quick about filling into a table. And also, I'm gonna have, we're going to work on gathering data about you guys. Um, nothing crazy, obviously. Um, just polling you guys, making some tables out of your data. Okay? So good luck and have fun.